Ada for reporting my best friend to the HR because she got our coworker fired for harassment. I think I 26 just lost my best friend 27 female, of 5 years over this. So me and my best friend Amy fake name, have known each other since our college days, I loved her like my sister she's a huge part in my life. After graduation we got jobs in the same company, I was ecstatic as I really liked the idea of us being together even after college. So here is the incident. One of our coworker 27 male, Steve likes Amy. He asked her out on a date. He was planning on quitting the company after two months as he got a better job opportunity abroad. Amy is currently single and is looking for relationship. The thing is that Amy started hating Steve as he got the job abroad to which she had also applied. When Steve asked her out Amy declined it in a friendly way and told him to not bring that up later. It was going all good until one of my other co-worker told me that Steve had been fired from our company and his job abroad is also at stake as somebody reported him work harassment. I was shocked and confused he was a good guy, like genuinely he was a good guy even Amy talked good about him. Later that evening Amy told that it was her who reported him to the HR for harassment. I asked her what happened, apparently he told her that he still likes her. I asked her if he had misbehaved with her. She freaking laughed at my face when I was concerned about her. She then proceeded to tell me that she just didn't like the guy. She hated that he got the job. So when Steve talked to her she saw it as a chance to lose his new job as she was the next in line to get that job. She then told me that she felt sorry for him as she thought that Steve would only lose his new job not the one that he have in our company. I got furious and shouted at her that I will inform this to the company and went home. I don't know what to do. If I report her to the HR then Amy's career will be over but at the same time I want to help Steve. I just can't look at Amy the same way. Amy's family has been texting and calling me the ah. They are furious at me as I said I'll report it to the HR. I am feeling betrayed by her, I don't know what made her do this. Am I the butthole for wanting to report against Amy? Edit, I went to work today and learned that he was not fired but was suspended until the HR investigation is done and they are withdrawing the recommendation the company made for his new job until the investigation is done which will result in him losing the new job. I'm going to talk to Amy and apologize to her so that I can hear the entire story about what she told to the HR. Not the butthole. This is foul, vicious, cruel, and hateful behavior. I have a few choice terms for people like this, but all of them will get me banned from this sub so I will just say that you absolutely need to report this to HR and if Amy texts you, screenshot that crap and take it to HR as proof. This is the lowest of the low and she needs to be punished for this. Not the butthole but you would be if you didn't report this. Your friend and I use the term very lightly, used a false SH report to cost this man his job and livelihood just because she was jealous he got a job opportunity she wanted. Not only could this ruin his career but his life as well. Distance yourself from this person ASAP and report her immediately. Am I the butthole for telling my dad he's a bad parent? My. 22 female, dad told me a few weeks ago that we were going to have to cancel Christmas this year because he couldn't afford it this year. He switched jobs recently and isn't in the best place financially. I told him I would handle the dinner and everything so he wouldn't have to worry about it and to just do what he could. I was under the impression that he had already purchased presents for my younger sibling slash niece and nephew, all who are pretty young, or at least had a plan to get them something. But instead he told me that he couldn't afford that either, which again I understood. I spent all of the money I had to buy presents for the kids so they would have something to open on Christmas. I went to his house this evening to drop off the presents along with the tree slash decorations I got since he had nothing. When I walked in he was in his room setting up a PS5, I was obviously confused when I saw this. He apparently had just bought it and was very excited to show it off. I got into an argument with him about how he had told me he had absolutely no money for Christmas, but he had the money to buy himself a PS5. I told him that he was a bad parent and that he is selfish and childish and a bunch of other colorful words. He told me that I am a child and he can do what he wants with his money. So am I the butthole for calling him a bad parent? ETA. He is now saying that he didn't need to get them gifts because he bought one of my brothers a pair of shoes a few weeks ago, my sister is too old for gifts, she's 15, and he made no mention of the other three. The kids in our ages 15, 12, 10, 6, 3, and 2. Me and my brother, 24, don't care about him not getting us anything, I haven't received Christmas or birthday presents since I was 14 but the younger kids deserve a better Christmas than just what I can provide. Not the butthole. So he has money for his shiny toy by not for his children? Sounds childish and selfish to me. Not the butthole. Take all the gifts back home and have Christmas at your place, sounds like he's going to be busy with his games anyway and probably won't care. So sorry, OP. Edit to address OP edit. You are breaking my heart OP. You might not think that what you can give these kids is enough but honestly loving them and showing that someone is putting them first is so much better than any Barbie or Lego set. The Who's had a pretty banging Christmas even before the Grinch brought back their stuff, maybe this will show your dad he's most definitely in the wrong. 
didn't mean my who comment to trivialize the situation. Meant to imply that it's not all on you and even a small gift will make these kids day. Also, thanks for the awards. I'm super flattered. Am I the butthole for telling my sister I would judge her for making the same mistake three times? My sister is a widowed mom of two boys who are six and seven. Her relationship with her late husband slash their father was not a happy one. They married too young and were not really good together but he adored my older nephew and was so excited for my younger nephew. He passed away days after the youngest was born. My sister admitted to me she didn't miss having her husband around and realized how unhappy she was with him. She was quickly talking about finding a father for her boys and how they all needed to be part of a loving family. She ended up meeting a widower with children nine months after her husband died and they moved in together after a year of dating and married six months later. They divorced after a year. The divorce came about because their wishes for the marriage could not be met. She wanted a family for the boys, a dad for them, and any kids in the home to be their siblings. But her ex's kids were not willing to be close to the kids, did not want a new mom, hated their dad being called my nephew's dad. He didn't want to force it on his kids. She wouldn't stay married where her kids were simply tolerated. She admitted while divorcing him that she had never actually asked if his kids would want to have her boys as just brothers. She assumed things would work that way. While she was divorcing her ex-husband she met another man, this time a guy who was divorced, who was older, with older kids, and they were engaged for more than a year. That relationship broke down because his much older kids, older teen and adults, did not want to be doting siblings for my nephews and essentially ignored their existence outside of the house. They did not seek a relationship beyond casual high and by. My sister was so upset about it. She tried pleading with these kids of her ex-fiancé to love her boys as brothers and give them the family they deserved. They told her that her boys would always just be kids to socialize with when seeing their dad, not siblings and not people they would count as part of their nuclear family. Now she's looking again for a new dad for them. I spoke to her about giving it time and taking the time to talk to the boys about their dad more, or at least let them have some more time with their dad's family. She said that would be bad for them. I know from her late husband's sister that their family was heartbroken to see that the boys had no idea who their dad was, and they thought daddy and mommy broke up because his other kids didn't want them. My sister has not really told them that their family is from their daddy. They speak to them and see them very rarely but it's enough for no grandparents' rights to take effect. I told her it won't be good for them in the future to realize their dad passed away and that she saw him as disposable. She said a living dad is more important and brought up how she knows I judge her for making the same mistake twice. I said I would judge her if she makes it again instead of accepting reality. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole. Your sister needs to see a psychiatrist or therapist or grief counselor to hash this crap out. It's just gonna cause emotional damage to those kids as they grow up. Not the butthole, of course. Your sister needs, emotional, help, she's harming her children, and her relationship with her children, by repeatedly trying to wedge them into a pre-made family dynamic instead of finding a decent guy and letting things develop over time. Not the butthole. But your sister needs some sort of help ASAP. She's damaging her kids with her expectations and cutting it off when she realizes it's not meeting those requirements. Those kids need a loving mother to help them through life without a dad. They don't need her juggling them through other families like she's doing. Growing up, feeling rejected by other step-siblings and many dads is not going to help. Am I the butthole for taking my daughter out of her school for bullying due to her being handicapped? So, close to a year ago, my, 38 female, daughter, 14 female, and her aunt, 32 female, got into a very serious car accident, that resulted in her T4 disc slipping, sorry if that's the wrong terminology, and causing paralysis. Her aunt got away with a broken wrist. It's important here to note that my daughter, who I will be calling JJ not her real name, has got an excellent relationship with her stepmother, my wife, and her father, my ex, is not in the picture for reasons I won't discuss. However, my wife, who I will call Amy, is not her legal guardian as when we got married she chose not to be. My wife is a general surgeon and so had the mindset after JJ's injury that she had all the says. This was sorted out and our relationship was very healthy. Last month, JJ was cleared by all her doctors to return back to school, which she was extremely excited for. We had multiple meetings with staff at her school to discuss accessibility accommodations and so forth, and the school was happy to make the necessary changes. JJ was always semi-popular at school, and of course this doesn't matter at all but to the kids at school it did. Now JJ was different, and according to them anything different was bad. These kids would bully her to the extent of doing things such as stealing her chair when she wasn't sitting in it, taking hold of her wheelchair handles when seeing her in the corridors and other things. She has spoken to staff at school and none of them are helping. I have spoken to staff at school and none of them helped. Throughout this Amy was no help and just stated boys will be boys. At her school, the holidays ended this last Friday. And on the Thursday, 
I picked up JJ outside of school with tears running down her face, and not a single teacher consoling her. Angrily, I stormed out the car and gave them a piece of my mind. JJ has been asking to transfer schools for weeks, and I decided it was finally time. I took her home and called the school, informing them that we were removing JJ of her placement. Now, my wife got extremely angry at this. She demanded that we call them back and tell them we changed our mind. She went to the secondary school and has a standing reputation of the golden girl. I refused and said it was destroying her mental health. The fight got worse and I kicked her out the house, saying that she can come back when she's apologized. All my friends say I've been a huge ass but JJ was very thankful for everything, and I intend to spend Christmas break with my girl close. But I do feel bad for lashing out. Am I the butthole? No. Not the butthole. Any partner who wants you to choose them over your child is a red flag and does not have your child's best interest at heart. Not the butthole. Could you have handled dealing with your wife better? Sure. Should you have? Nope, not at all, absolutely no. Your daughter's experiences at the school was worse than basic bullying. That wheelchair is an extension of her body. They were taking away her ability to do things for herself by grabbing the chair and pushing it. They were forcing her to be completely helpless by taking the chair. Your wife is a sexist, ableist butthole and you gave her what she deserves. Good for you. Am I the butthole for taking my vacation I've had planned for six months? Am I the butthole for taking my vacation that I put in for six months ago? I, assistant manager, ASM, put in for a family vacation that my parents had booked for all of our family for a trip for Christmas. My general manager, GM, raised a stink about it because GM had supposedly put in for some time similarly years ago and it was denied. GM proceeded to tell me to get a hold of corporate as the time fell during blackout periods and that GM could not approve it without their approval. I called our district manager, DM, who was an interim DM for us at the time. DM approved it as it was a family trip and not me taking time to just take time and it was a special occasion. DM said that they'd call the GM and let GM know to approve the time. Fast forward 15 minutes, I receive a call from the DM saying that DM cannot approve the full time and can only approve a week because DM was not aware that the GM had tried something similarly in the past and was denied. Meanwhile, I had called my parents to go ahead and book the plane tickets as they were waiting on the checkout page for an answer and I called and let them know it was okay to do so. I told the DM that it was booked and that it was already approved so I was planning on going and I was not going to put the company ahead of the time I was going to be spending with my family. DM said they'd have to figure it out and will let me know. I put it in our planner at work and documented that I was not going to be there. Fast forward another 3 to 4 months. GM and I had a disagreement and had to get corporate involved because of said arguments, but that is another story. So we were on bad terms. In all of this, I had spoken to our new DM about said vacation time and DM said that they were aware of the situation. I reinforced the I was not going to put the company over my family and I would be out. DM said okay, we will cross this bridge when it came time to do so. I had to figure out where to use all my PTO I had banked and had set aside a full week to use in the new year for the rest of vacation. I was told by GM that I'd have to call corporate to find out if it rolls over to the new year. I found out it does not, so I put in the week that I was going to be out at unpaid time off. Our new DM, no longer the interim and a different person, apparently denied it with no call or explanation why. I did not see that until last week when GM started to make the schedule for the new year. I reminded GM that I was going to be out, and that I will not be back until such and such date. Well, turns out another associate has something going on the weekend that I fly back and had told GM and was approved over a month ago to take off. Now, GM has made plans to go out of town after GM knew that I and another associate will be be out and it leaves only one associate to run the store. GM has only had these plans for like two weeks. GM is in a stink because I won't be there and they may have to leave the store short staff slash miss out on the weekend. Am I the butthole for not caring? Not the butthole. They've had more than enough time to figure this out. Honestly, there are better jobs out there that probably pay more. Hope you have a great trip with your family. You informed them six months ago. You've repeatedly reminded them of that and are taking the time as unpaid. Not the butthole. You need to be a team player. The team you play for is, your last name, not, company name. You've given your employer plenty of notice as to how you would be using the PTO they gave you. It's now up to them to deal with the staffing issues. Not the butthole. Am I the butthole for taking neighbors parking away? I moved into my current home about 15 years ago but the issue leading to this started 5 years ago. When the developer built the houses I live in, he planned to build another one on the end next to mine but could not get planning permission as the plot was to narrow 21 feet, about 2.5 parking spaces wide and there is no footpath on the side road. 
The space went undeveloped so people just parked on it as the street at the front has parking restrictions, max two-hour stay, for non-permit holders, non-residents, and the nearest parking for longer is a pay and display car park about 5 to 10 minutes walk away. When I met my now wife who is a wheelchair user I asked my neighbors if they could leave the area closest to the path for her or at least leave extra space as she needed to open her door fully to get her chair in and out. All I got was it's not designated parking or a disabled space so shove off. They then made sure to use that area and or park no more than 6 inches from driver's door of her car so she had to park on street. Here is where I maybe the ah the builder put the plot up for sale by auction and I bought it, put up signs and started issuing parking charges to every unauthorized vehicle i.e. not me or wife. Once neighbors stopped parking there I had it paved and a 3 foot fence built with electric gate. Neighbors complained to council as I had not filed for planning permission but it was all covered by permitted development. I should point out again that as a result of me blocking off this parking area that they had used for years anyone coming to visit my neighbors has a 5 to 10 minute walk from the nearest parking spot if they want to stay more than 2 hours, traffic wardens regularly patrol the road. Neighbors then sued me for stopping them using their parking spaces so I took them to court for not paying the parking charges they lost I won. Most people I know say I asked nicely first so did nothing wrong when acting less nicely but others say I should have given them a warning first or turned it into designated parking. So I have a legal judgment but I would like a moral one so am I the butthole for one, sending my neighbors parking charge notices for using the space they had always used to, closing off the spaces knowing it would cause issues just because I could? On what grounds did the neighbors sue you for buying a piece of land and using it for your needs? I am dying to know. Info. Not the butthole. Your neighbors are massive DCKS for not listening to your needs at first, not even willing to move for your pregnant wife. Then you bought up the plot and your neighbors are still persisting on wanting to park there even when they know it's your land. Also, on what basis did they sue you for? Not the butthole on both accounts. You bought the property fair and square, what sounds like keeping it within code. You can do what you want with said property. What you did was legal, and was in response to their multiple years of antisocial behavior. Absolutely not the butthole, and well done. Edited Swipo, but again, well done. Am I the butthole for not answering my coworkers' calls and messages during lunch and after hours? My coworker has been calling and messaging when they know I'm taking my lunch and when I'm done for the day. When this happens and I see the notification, I don't answer anymore. I handed in my two weeks yesterday morning and I'm so over this place from burnout. My coworkers' messages all start with hi or are you available to call? With no context on what it entails. They never elaborate on their issue after that. They just go straight into calling me despite me not replying. Sometimes they don't even ask if I'm available and call me out of the blue. My coworker said I was rude for not answering her calls and messages and that they all would have been very quick to address. She said because I was training her to take over my responsibilities, I should be more responsive and ensure that she learns everything before I leave. Since we don't have much time, I have to be more obliging and more of a team player. My other coworkers heard what happened and are saying that because I used to always go above and beyond and help everyone, I should continue doing that until I leave. Context. I used to do it every day and whenever people reached out to me after my day was done, I would answer. This sort of expectation was set from the start when I was reprimanded for leaving on time during my training period. My manager said I wasn't a team player. This meant staying back an extra 3 plus hours a day and responding to emails and messages on PTO. My coworker is struggling to take over my responsibilities and has a lot of questions to ask but I don't want to answer then during my lunch break and after hours. Am I the butthole? Edit, I would be compensated after hours at a regular rate but not my lunch break. Not the butthole. You aren't obliged to answer the calls. You are leaving because of burnout. Your employer should be training them and available for calls during your downtime. Forward her calls to the boss. Not the butthole, don't worry about this. What are they going to do, sack you? Just do your hours and if you have a leaving interview, let it all go there. Am I the butthole for telling my partner not to use the bathroom? Me, 36 female and my partner, 42 male, share a small flat with one bathroom. Every evening I enjoy a relaxing bath to unwind and de-stress. Every evening without fail my partner will interrupt me to take a massive stinking dump in the toilet right next to the bath I'm trying to relax in. Not only that, but he will sit on his phone and play loud annoying videos on his phone. It totally ruins my relaxation times. I've tried to be polite and ask him to turn down the videos a bit or at least spray some air freshener, but he just laughs. He doesn't understand why this is such a big deal to me as taking a bath is purely functional to him. Tonight he waltzes in to take a crap while I'm relaxing and I blow up at him and tell him to use the toilet when I'm done. He's really upset. Am I the butthole for being too precious with my bath time? Edit. To clarify, I just take a short bath, 30 minutes maximum. I take my bath at random times in the evening, 
anywhere from 7 to 11 at night. In the past I would ask if he needed to use the bathroom, but he would say probably at some point but not give a definite answer. I've spoken tonight after our argument and he says he likes having company on the toilet. Not the butthole, if you were being literal that he does this every time you're in the bath, he's doing it deliberately. Lock the door. Yeah, not the butthole. I would be annoyed too if my husband did something like that. Also, the fact that you asked him to stop and he laughed and ignored you is not a great sign. Not the butthole I can't understand how sexy time works after smelling that. I have yet to poop in front of my partner after 10 plus years. At this point, I'm not going to take any chances to ruin what I have. Nta, lock the door. And lock it hard. Am I the butthole for banning my 8 year nephew from my place until my sister replaces my stuff that my nephew lost, broken? I, 30 female, practically raised my 8 year nephew and love him as my own. My sister, 28 female, used to work afar so she had to leave him at my, my mother's care when he was a baby. Three years ago she found a job and house nearby, but my nephew still spends his weekdays in my place and only goes at my sister's place during the weekends. My nephew tends to be careless with everyone's stuff, but he's specially careless with mine. I think because he's closest to me and has no restrictions. He has already broken two phones, two eyeglasses, one laptop and so many other stuff. I chalk it up to him being a kid and therefore never gets mad. But when he turned eight, I started teaching him about boundaries. That when I tell him something is hands off, then he must not play with it. A concept he's really having a hard time with. Yesterday I saw him fiddling with the contact lenses I just bought the other day. I told him it's a hands off because I will need to wear it for an office party later, and that I wouldn't have any backup because he just broke my eyeglasses. An hour before the party, all I have to do is wear my contact lenses. Et voila. It's missing. When I asked my nephew, he admitted to have dropped it. We looked for it to no avail, and I ended up not being able to go to the office party. This is the only time I got really mad. I got mad that he didn't listen to me for the NTH time and that he didn't even bother picking it up after dropping it, because to me that shows his lack of respect to me. Sure I can buy a new pair again just like what I've done several times in the past, but I really wanted to teach him a lesson about boundaries and respect, and in my perspective, the best way to do that is show him the consequences. So, I dropped him to his mom afterwards and told both of them that he will be banned at my place until they replace either the contact lens he lost or the eyeglasses he broke. My sister does not agree with my method, said I'm being petty for getting mad over it and she would rather spend money on food. My mother thinks I'm being harsh considering it will be Christmas soon, and that my nephew is still too young to understand what I'm trying to teach him. I felt I was right, but now I'm not sure. Am I the butthole for banning my 8 year nephew to teach him about consequences, considering that it will be Christmas soon? Update. Thank you to all who gave their feedback. I just talked to my nephew and he agreed to write a whole page essay to reflect about his actions, and to wash the plates at home for two weeks to pay for what he lost. I agree that banning him from my place might be too harsh, but to clarify, it isn't like I didn't try to talk to him or discipline gently when he was younger. His habit has mellowed down towards other people's stuff but not towards mine, which I conclude is because of his total lack of fear of me. I am not fond of punishments, disciplined by fear because I grew up from that kind of environment. I think I want to be a security blanket because I didn't have one growing up, but it can be a struggle to balance things out. Appreciate all those who gave their advice. Everybody sucks here first off, 8 years old is old enough to understand the basics of what is a toy and what is not. Someone has failed in teaching him this. And while I understand you are not the parent, but you are an adult and you know his track record and should have taken steps to just taken the lenses away from him. His mother should also take responsibility and if not pay all, then some of the values of what he breaks, and the kid desperately needs to learn there are consequences to his actions, though banning him is a bit overkill because neither the mother or you don't have the guts to give him a form of punishment, like a timeout corner, no game time, do some extra chores, you haven't mentioned anything any punishment, only a command word that apparently is not enforced or punished, so he will never truly learn. This isn't the case of spilling some milk, he is physically destructive and it will become a problem eventually it's not addressed sooner rather than later. Edie day to clean up some sentences and a typo. Not the butthole, 8 is plenty old to stop being a brat and your mom and his mom both need to stop enabling this behavior. Everybody sucks here. You are all doing a pretty poor job of raising this child. He should have been taught not to mess with other people's stuff as soon as he was able to get to it. You say you've let things go until he was 8, way too long. No wonder he thinks it's fine to break stuff, if it always has been fine. You, and your sister, and your mother, and any other responsible adult in the kid's life, need to get your act together. Am I the butthole for telling my GF no one cares that the math is right and agreeing with my friend? My friend moved into a basement suite that has a 60-40 split with the top tenants. 
she complained to us when we came over that she was being overcharged for utilities and that the landlord was favoring the upstairs tenants. My GF is an engineer and very good at math. She volunteered to see if the calculations were accurate for the total my friend was being asked to pay. So because my friend didn't move in on the first of the month she gets a bit more of a discount and the math is more complex. My friend agreed and my GF sat down with a piece of paper and showed her work and showed her how it was calculated from the bill. She finished and said the landlord's math was accurate and my friend got super mad and said she was being scammed. My GF was super confused and asked her to show what part of her math was incorrect and my friend said she didn't care about the math the utilities was just more expensive than her previous place so she was being scammed. My GF told her utilities were getting more and more expensive since it's winter and this place was a two bed rather than her previous place which was a one bed so unless she can show the numbers are incorrect she wasn't being scammed by the landlord and there wasn't favoritism. I know my GF's math is right but I piped up and agreed with my friend saying she was being scammed and my friend looked satisfied and my GF looked pissed. In the car she got mad at me misinterpreting that I was saying her math was incorrect but I told her she is correct but my friend feels like she is being overcharged and insisting she isn't, from a purely math perspective, is just going to cause her to lash out. My GF is very logical and analytical, she will agree with people and change her perspective if she feels like her perspective isn't logical. But most people aren't like that. She countered by saying I'm letting her argue with her landlord and upstairs tenants over something they are right about which will probably make her landlord want to kick her out when rents are getting more expensive and picking a fight with a landlord over the pricing of utilities that is managed by energy companies is barking up the wrong tree. I told her sometimes she needs to realize it's not her fight to make people see logic and some people just need someone to agree with them and she was meddling in someone else's business. She called me a coward which pissed me off and we got into a fight over it. You're the butthole I hope she dumps you. This pandering to people who insist their feelings are more important than facts are why we live in the current world we live in. You're the butthole. She was right and you know it. You could have even stayed quiet or redirected the conversation, still crafty but a little less so, but instead you actively went against your GF. Your friend asked for the math, so your GF complied and did it. Your friend doesn't get to throw a fit that the results weren't in alignment with her assumptions, and you shouldn't have supported your friend in doing so. Would I be the butthole for telling my sister to return what she took from a charity? My sister, 36, and her husband, 34, are seemingly well off. She makes almost six figures working at a private rehab center and her husband is a career Marine. The Marines take part toys for tots every year and this year Disneyland was involved. Disneyland apparently donated $500,000 worth of toys for the charity. My sister told me over the phone that her husband took about $1,000 worth of toys home for their two kids, one items being a massive Lego set supposedly worth about $500. After I got off the phone with her I started to dwell. Her family is not underprivileged and they are not struggling by any means. Therefore, they wouldn't be the receivers of toys for tots. I want to tell her to return the items because her kids do not need what they took. Would I be the butthole? Update, my sister got back to me and informed me to do to all the donations they received they went over quota. Because of so all the marines that volunteered were given permission to take gifts home to their family. I think she over exaggerated the actual value of the toys as she is prone to do so. Thank you everyone for your responses and advice. I can't delete the post until it's been up for 48 hours. I've been doing USMC toys for tots for years and I bust my ass so kids get toys every year. I work non-stop. To hear that someone is stealing from underprivileged children sickens me. Not the butthole I don't think you will change a thing about her perspective or entitled attitude but you will at least have tried. Your sister and her husband are very much TA. They are stealing from needy children. Your sister and her husband are the worst kind of thieves. Not the butthole. You should definitely express your disapproval, though people like this aren't likely to change. I've got someone like that in my family. Your sister and her husband are thieves. Tell her to return the items or you will report them. Am I the butthole BC I want our roommate to contribute to food? So my husband wanted a roommate. I didn't. But he was very persistent so I bent. I allowed a roommate, it was his friend. My husband is in the army. So he gets ba for our apartment. His friend isn't married so he doesn't. I was under the impression it would be just him. Then he said his fiancé will be here in January. I then thought okay so he'll just be here today I learned January no, he wants to get married and then continue living with us. We live in a tiny ass apartment. 4 PPL will be very crowded. He is sleeping on our couch RNBC he doesn't have a bed. We agreed that he will pay 400 a month. And then I said OFC you will also have to buy your own food they got upset over that. My husband said well that wouldn't be fair he doesn't get paid as much as I do because he's not married we are already tight on money. We've been talking about trying to food stamps. A lot of families have had to BC after every bill, we still live paycheck to paycheck. So they are wanting us to pay for food for ourselves and the roommates. 
They aren't family, I have not birthed them. We should not be feeding them. They aren't even paying half of rent. We also have to pay about 160 for utilities and 80 for internet. Rent is 1000. They are only paying 400 and expects us to feed them as well. They said we should just use the 400 for food. Am I being irrational? They should be paying rent and feeding themselves. I agreed to one roommate so we can save for our baby. Now we have two and we have to feed them. Somehow my husband is on their side. BC the roommate doesn't get by it isn't fair to expect them to buy food. If they can't afford it then he should just go back to the barracks. I get that the barracks isn't exactly the best, but at least you can buy food and spend money on stuff. If he's gonna be struggling so much living with us then why the frick is he? Also, they want to eat together too. Like each meal we make they expected to eat it too. So am I the butthole? Edit, the day I agreed to have a roommate the guy just showed up and just hasn't left. I didn't even have time to talk with my husband. And not mention he came over and just stocked our fridge with beer. I have to move some alcoholic beverage to just get to my food. All he does is drink. If he has money to buy that much freaking beer he should have enough to buy food. Not the butthole. With the cost of food this is entirely unreasonable. Why does your husband care so much more deeply about the well-being of his friend than he does about his own wife's? Not the butthole. Something odd going on between husband and this man. When roommate was brought up, it was going to be him. Not just a random stranger. Him. I might make it one less person by removing myself. But I say that after being through something similar. Yours will have to play out, I suppose. Not the butthole. I am surprised your husband is agreeing to financially support his friend. Friend has the option to live in the barracks and get food at the mess hall at no cost. If he chooses not to do that, then he needs to pay for his share. If he doesn't get paid enough to do that, then he needs to go back to option 1. If he is getting married, then he will get a housing stipend and can get his own tiny apartment just like you have. Living with you shouldn't be an option. Does he think him and his new wife are going to sleep on your couch? That's ridiculous. Yeah, something's off and my spidey senses are tingling. Why is your husband more concerned about this guy rather than you? And are you the one expected to cook for all of you? Hey, I'm not in the military so I don't get ba but I'll gladly give you $400 for a roof and food. Not the butthole. Something's going on. Am I the butthole for booking my wedding on my bridesmaid's 30th birthday? Long story short fiancé and I just set a date and booked our venue last week for a date in 2024. We had to change the date because of a scheduling conflict with the best man so figured that we would just move the wedding to the following Saturday. This happens to be one of my bridesmaid's birthdays. I jokingly texted her asking if she's okay with my wedding being moved to that date and she sort of flipped out. I did not expect her response. She started off by making comments like you better sing happy birthday to me and I expect a cupcake. Then a few hours later she sent me this. No that's not true I don't want to lie to you. I guess it does hurt a little I don't want to be selfish or make you feel bad. I don't really feel like there is a way to say no. I guess I'm a little hurt because it's a huge birthday it's gonna be my 30th and I was hoping to do something special for it and I will lose that weekend because there will be so much going on with the wedding. I'm not angry but I am a little sad. I don't want to be selfish but I just wanted to say it because I didn't want to not say anything and let it fester. Am I the butthole? Edit, best man conflict. He is already in another wedding that weekend out of town. He got the dates mixed up he was willing to take an Uber after our wedding to make it to the next and we decided to move it he did not ask us to. He is a member of the groom's family so this one was non-negotiable. She can chose to come to my wedding if she wants or celebrate her birthday her own way I would never hold that against her. I would rather her do that than come and be upset the entire time and feel like she missed out. Edit, I have already made several changes to me wedding plan to accommodate her. She is really tight on money so I picked cheap bridesmaid dresses and I am covering the cost of her hair, makeup, hotel, etc. for the day. I can't afford to do this for all of my bridesmaids but I didn't want her to feel bad about not being in the wedding because of money. I'm the most hurt about her saying she's sad and that the weekend would go to waste. Her and her partner would have had all of their meals paid for the entire weekend. Edit, my 30th birthday is a few days after hers. We have been friends for 20 years and we have never made a big deal about our birthdays. That was the whole point of me joking about the wedding being on her birthday. For years we both ignored our birthdays for the most part and joked about how ridiculous birthdays are. Which is also why I didn't expect her to feel this way. Also for those asking about the weekend before we would lose some vendors. But the venue has this date available it's another option we are floating around with the venue to try to make things work and replace the vendors. We haven't booked the date of her birthday it is the first choice for the reschedule and the second is the weekend prior if we can swing new vendors within the next few days. The date is off season because it's what we can afford. I didn't pick this date specifically it was the date offered to us from the venue that lined up with our vendors. Thanks for y'all's honesty.
I would rather lose vendor slash deposits than lose a friend so I will make the other date work. After she sent that message yesterday I told her that I was going to change the date and she apologized and told me not to so I didn't know how to take it. I think that her and I need to have a conversation over the phone, text convos are awful, once I can lock down the other date with the venue. You're the butthole. You already rescheduled once because someone in the wedding party had a conflict. You still have a conflict. Pick another date. Edit, double you're the butthole based on your edits. You volunteered to reschedule your wedding for her birthday so that someone else who screwed up the dates wouldn't have to rush from one event to another. Guess you got your revenge on her for having to buy those cheap bridesmaid dresses, huh? You're the butthole it's a milestone birthday, no one wants to spend a milestone birthday at someone else's wedding. And you knew it was her birthday when you booked the venue. And it's not just a guest, it's a bridesmaid. Her entire day revolves around catering to you. Of course you're the butthole here. How can you not see that? And you jokingly texted her to see if it was okay? You don't even care that you're the butthole. Be honest, you just came here hoping people would side with you and make you feel better, didn't you? It's honestly your attitude about the whole thing that really irks me. Info, why is the best man worth rescheduling for but not the bridesmaid? You're the butthole. If this person is important enough to you that you've put them in your wedding then it should be important to you that you honor her milestone b-day. You change the date for another member of your bridal party. Choose a different date that doesn't fall on your friend's birthday. Especially since you asked her and she told you she does care. Honestly, pretty crummy that you put her in that spot to begin with. Am I the butthole for not allowing my roommate to switch places with her much older sister? I am, female, 23 my roommate is, female, 25 and L her sister is 40s F. So I live in an apartment with three bedrooms, two bathrooms and a large kitchen slash living room. About a year ago I decided to rent out one of the two bedrooms as frankly the place is too big for me alone. It made financial sense and I only need one extra room for guests. So in came Sandra I knew her from college a few years ago and we kept in touch. She was desperately looking for a room in my area housing crisis and all. I offered and the rest is history. Now it went fine the past year. We both have our own life, both work a lot, but we got along well, no big issues and so on. So that leads us to a week or two ago, she told me she was moving in with her boyfriend of several years and if I was alright with her moving out next month, I was taken by surprise but happy for her regardless, so I told her it was fine, despite the lack of notice and assumed it was the end of that, I wasn't in a rush to find a new roommate or anything. Well she decided to surprise me and told me that I didn't need to worry about finding a new roommate or cancelling our agreement as her sister would take her place. Now I admit at first I was like ooh that's fine I guess but it turns out her sister is in her 40s and has an 18 something year old son that regularly stays with her. Now when I figured that out I was like yeah that's not happening it turned into a whole argument where she said I already agreed, her sister had nowhere to go and was banking on this etc. Now I feel kind of crafty, to be fair my main reason for not accepting this while probably a bit mean are honestly because I don't want to live with someone almost twice my age, I feel like it will inevitably lead to conflict because of vastly different lifestyles, I mean I work a lot and when I don't work I go out or have parties at my place and I don't feel that suits with a part time which means home a lot working mom to be honest add to that the fact I was told her son visits her several days a week which obviously mes and he has to sleep somewhere which isn't gonna be my guest room. So am I the butthole for shoving the proverbial wrench in their plans? Edit, just to be clear, I am not sure whether her son would sleep here, I just understood he'd be over a lot so him at least occasionally sleeping here is an logical assumption. Not the butthole. She withheld critical information. She didn't give you all the information to make an educated decision. Hard not the butthole. Your roommate is only slight the butthole because she made a lot of assumptions. Unless, of course, she was trying to pull the wool over your eyes, then she's definitely in awe. Not the butthole. Sorry the fact her sister is 40 and a young adult male will be coming to stay several days a week so will also be your housemate is critical information. No one asked you if you were okay with having an 18 year old male live with your half the week. Also no one discussed with you the extra financial or sleeping arrangements for her having an extra person living there half the week. It is tough they should have been honest and it is a reasonable bet there were not because they were concerned you would have an issue. You don't have to feel and should not let anyone guilt you into feeling uncomfortable in your own home. Hash to quote Reddit you don't have to set yourself on fire to keep others warm. Am I the butthole for telling my teacher she's overreacting about my mispronunciation of my th words? I, 16 female, have a lot of weird and obscure sensory issues that few people understand and even fewer make an attempt. I hate the texture of memory foam and sponges so much that I developed a fear towards them. Fluorescent lights make my skull hurt, and more relevant to the topic at hand, I hate pronouncing th words correctly because the feeling of my tongue being between my teeth makes me want to throw up. So, due to that my THS are often pronounced more with a D or just a T. 
As far as I knew it was hardly noticeable and I never had anyone complain or call me out for it besides my parents when they were teaching me about th words. When I got old enough to explain they didn't see a reason why it absolutely needed to be corrected. Everyone still knows what I'm saying, I thought it sounded almost exactly the same, and I don't get the ick feeling when I talk. I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. Until my English teacher pulled me aside and asked me why I mispronounced th words. When I explained it to her she almost scoffed at me and told me that was the most ridiculous excuse she had ever heard, and then proceeded to tell me that she was docking marks off my presentation simply for that reason. I told her I think it's strange how much she's overreacting about something so insignificant, that if my reason wasn't good enough for her that wasn't my issue, and that if she gets this bent out of shape about a small difference in pronunciation perhaps she should rethink teaching a diverse group of students. She evidently did not like my response, said it's no shock coming from your entitled generation and attempted to give me detention just for saying what I did. I'm honestly just confused. I haven't told anyone about this interaction but I have thought about it a lot and I can't tell if I'm right or if I just don't have any perspective. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole. Your teacher is way out of line, and I recommend having your parents advocate for you through school administration. Your teacher should not be deducting marks for something non-academic, and unrelated to the class material being taught. ETA you hit the nail on the head when you commented about her need to reconsider teaching a diverse group of students. She may be fine teaching a homogenous group of neurotypical kids, doubtful, but maybe, but she does not have the right toolkit to manage a classroom that includes neurodiversity of any sort. Edit, a word. Not the butthole, but I have to ask, do you have an IEP? If you have a documented condition that requires accommodation and she is denying it, report her. Info, do you have a documented condition? I'm a 35 years slash O man whose only social media is Reddit, and even I have seen how many kids go on TikTok and pretend to have Tourette's or DID, etc. without medical documentation. If someone told me pronouncing TH sound made them feel ill I'd call bullcrap too. I had a student a few years ago who came in wearing his button-down shirt inside out, I took one look at him, sent him in the hallway, and said, the tag is bothering you, he said yes. I went to my desk and got my seam ripper and sent him to the bathroom. He would rather endure kids making fun of him than feeling the tag. Any time he had a new shirt after that he would come to me and ask for the seam ripper. The struggle is real. The teacher should have been more understanding and supportive. Her reaction confuses me. I can understand her asking but to call your explanation ridiculous? I know you're nearing the end of high school, but your parents and you could look into getting a 504 plan. The accommodation would be that you can't be penalized for anything related to your sensory issues, like points off on an oral presentation. Then you wouldn't have to explain, you could just tell the teacher she should have received a copy of your 504 plan. Not the butthole. Am I the butthole for kicking my husband out of our bedroom after he refused to help when I and the kids are sick? So it started with my oldest feeling ill this Monday after spending the weekend at our house, and her dad kept her home from school all week and assumed she had the flu as many in her class were out with the flu. Then our nearly two-year-old got ill on Thursday, so I stayed home from work with her she was feeling terrible and really in my face. I tried to not get coughed on but really was impossible. Friday my husband stayed home with her and said she just played around by herself. Which I now question, as she was still clingy all weekend and how he acted all weekend. Saturday I woke up with a really sore throat and progressively felt worse all day, but still took care of our toddler as she was clingy and wanted to cuddle. As well as my two other children are with us on weekends, and my oldest still has a cough and is just tired, so caring for her. My parents came over on Saturday and noted I didn't look good and sent me to rest and played with the kids and got them dinner. I don't think I even realized until right now that clearly my parents even realized my husband wasn't doing anything at the time. Sunday I woke up feeling like death, and since I am 7 months pregnant my OB said I was high risk for flu and recommended I get tested and on Tamiflu so I did. All day I felt horrid throat on fire, headache, chills, body aches, vomiting, lightheaded, exhausted. I repeatedly told my husband this, and his continued response was he hopes he doesn't get it. And then to freak out whenever anyone would cough. He continued to avoid the whole family and just laid in bed watching videos on his phone, and took two couple hour naps leaving me to care for the three kids while feeling like death. He only got up when I tearfully kicked him out of his naps one to get the kids lunch while I napped. When I woke up, the kids said he never got them food. And then second time so I could take a bath and he proceeded to go back to hiding in the bedroom and my toddler came to find me because she couldn't find dad. I confronted him about his complete lack of help and his excuse was he didn't want to get the flu. So I took his pillow and kicked him out of the bedroom because if he's so scared of getting the flu he shouldn't be around us at all and I am too angry to even look at his face. He thinks because he is high risk too, had a kidney transplant so is on immunosuppressants, and has a job interview later this week, he is in the right for not taking care of his sick family and forcing me to while also sick. 
I would also like to state I am not unreasonable and don't want him to get sick too he could have helped clean, get us food, or anything to make less work for me and I wouldn't be so upset. But the fact he was napping while I am sick and doing everything really just upsets me. So am I the butthole for getting upset and kicking him out? Or is he for not helping at all and avoiding us all? Not the butthole. If he's on immune suppressive drugs, of course, it's important that he not get sick. You and the kids should be confined to your rooms and only leave masked while he handles housework and delivers food. Not the butthole on this exact situation. But you have two other kids, and now three more with a guy who acts this way? You may not be in butthole, but your judgment sounds poor if you chose a husband like this. Cue the rebuttal about how amazing a husband and daddy is, except for this single moment in time. Info, you and your kids don't seem to be isolating at all, and there's no talk of masks in the home to try to limit transmission to your immunocompromised husband. Are you not doing anything, even though we became kind of good these last three years at trying to limit transmission of respiratory illness? How have you traditionally handled illness in your home? Is he vaccinated for the flu? I do think him sleeping in another well-ventilated bedroom with clean sheets and pillows slash cases is actually the smarter move, but I think everybody sucks here. He sucks for not helping meet needs of the family, you suck for not helping to make a plan so that can happen safely by consolidating sick people and sequestering yourselves.